this Sunday, want to speak on one of the subjects that have affected human life so much. It's called money. Knowing money. It is a subject Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 19 he said a feast is made for laughter and wine maketh merry but money answereth all things. The contrary is 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 10 he said for the love of money is the root of all evil. Which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. The Lord bless his word in Jesus' name. This morning, we have a fourfold objective or five. One, we want to understand why we must know money. Why we must know money. Understanding why we must know money or know about money. That will take us to understanding the power of money. Understanding why we must know money or know about money. Number two, you know, that's, that will take us to understanding the power of money. That's still number one. Number two, we'll be understanding what our relationship with money should be. Understanding what our relationship with money should be. That will show us the place of money in the life of a child of God. The place of money. Number three, will be understanding kingdom keys to having money. Kingdom keys. That will give us usher us into the exploration of money. Number four, we shall be understanding what to do with money. What to do with money. Money has entered my hands. What do I do with it? And then number, six, number five, Understanding money traps to avoid. Money traps to avoid. What are the traps regarding money that I must avoid? Lift one right hand up and see after me. Say, Father. Help me. Help me to do it well. Help me to understand the place of money. Help me, Lord, to understand the place of money in life. In the name of Jesus. If you are saying amen, say it louder, amen. Our gymnastics girl is um, going for certain assignment. Hallelujah. By way of introduction, okay, why must we know money? What should our relationship with money be? What are the kingdom keys to having money? That is exploring, exploring the potential of money. What do we do with money? The possibilities of money. 
And what are the traps to avoid the problems of money? I want to start by way of introduction. That money plays such a vital role, a key role, a pivotal role for human existence. Everybody will need money at one time or the other or in fact need money permanently. Listen to this. Nobody is too spiritual to need money. Am I communicating? Nobody is too educated. He has so much degrees. He doesn't need money. Nobody is too physically powerful to need money. Nobody is too beautiful for money. I am too fine. I don't need money. Nobody is too talented. I, I can sing more than a singing bird. And I don't need money. Nobody. Money is so vital to life. That Jesus spoke majorly. He spoke a lot about money. On both sides. And the apostles. But this is a challenge. The unfortunate challenge is that very few people, including those who have money, very few people know money. No, very few people really know what money is. Money. Very few people know the power of money. The place that money occupies or should occupy. The potentials of money and the problems of money. Look at your neighbor say, please listen very well. You are going to hear things today that will change your life. Now, when we are ignorant on the knowledge of money, we become victims of the challenges of money. Somebody says, money good. Or evil. Money is neutral. Whether it is good or evil, it depends on who is holding it. It's immoral. It's neutral. It's neutral. There is the neutrality of money. It is the owner, the holder of the money that determines the goodness or badness of money. And we're going to go to that now. Why must we know about money? And this will show us the power of money. Number one, money affects the quality of human life. It affects the quality of our lives. It affects the quality of our lives. It affects the quality of man's life. Someone is living in a seven bedroom duplex in a high brow area of the city another person is living in an uncompleted one room apartment in a slum part of the city the difference is the availability of money it's not because the person who is living in the one bedroom apartment in the slum does not like the seven bedroom duplex. It is the availability of money. When somebody say I'm looking for house. It's actually not looking for house. Because houses are everywhere. Anywhere you want to live. You can, you, there are houses of one million dollars. There are houses of five million dollars. There are houses everywhere. What somebody was looking for is money. If you want to buy, there is a house to buy. 
If you want to buy 100 hectares now, there is land to buy. Number two, and that is why the Bible said in 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 17, 1 Timothy chapter 6 and in verse 17, he said, Judge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches. But in the living God, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. I prophesy to somebody here today. The quality of your life will change after today. If you are saying amen, say it loud, amen. Number two, very important. Money affects the focus of man's spirituality. It affects the focus of our spirituality. Money affects it. The focus of our spirituality, money affects it. In Mark chapter 12, verse 29 to 30, Mark 12, 29 to 30, he said, And Jesus answered him, The first of all commandment is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. Everybody here can confirm that if scarcity is worrying you, it's not possible to focus on the Lord with all your mind. <laughs> he said, Chineke. It's not possible. It's not possible for 100% of your attention to be on God. House rent is not yet paid. 100% of your attention is on God. Children's school fees are there. There is a debt on your neck. It's not, it affects the focus of man's spirituality. That was why he said in the book of Joel chapter 2 verse 27. He said, And you shall know. Okay, verse 26. Verse 26. He said, And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And when you have eaten and you are satisfied, then you can praise the name of the Lord your God. It is easy to praise when hunger is absent. Are you hearing what I'm saying? <laughs> My children, when they were very young, there was a particular child, as soon as food arrives, singing starts. I'm talking of child of three or four years. It was not premeditated. It just, just that's, the song is automatic. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It affects the focus of our spirituality. I heard the story some time ago when the, the, they say, Praise the Lord. Instead of saying hallelujah, somebody in the church say, 100 naira. What was happening was that while the service was on, Hundred naira she was owing somebody occupied her mind. I'm talking about 20 years ago or more. How am I going to pay this money? Listen to this. It affects the focus of your spirituality because the time you, you need to use to, to, to stand in the gap, to intercede for the souls that are lost, to intercede for revival. You are using that time to pray about money problems. Lord, I need you to set me free from this financial harassment. I'm, I'm trusting you for a change of story. For how long will my life remain like this? Father, change my story. That occupies the prayer vocabulary of a man who has money challenge. But when bills are paid, when you are owing nobody under heaven, you can open your mouth and say, Father, I am trusting you for you to turn around the, the situation of our nation. I am trusting you for the salvation of the laws. I am trusting you for deliverance of, 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 of so and so person. Money is so powerful that it affects the focus 
of our spirituality. Number three. This is very, very serious. Money reveals the reality of our character. It reveals the reality of man's character. It affects the focus of man's spirituality. It reveals the reality of man's character. It unveils the true nature and identity of a person. You don't know people in, humi in, in poverty. You don't know who they are. It's in prosperity you know who people are. Most people have an impartation of humility where there is poverty. They are very, very sober. Very, very gentle. Very, very cool. Very, very amenable. Easily entreatable. You can discuss with them. Abraham Lincoln said, you don't know anybody in adversity. If you want to know anybody, give him power. And one of the powers you can give to somebody to know him is the power of money. That man will not marry plenty wives in poverty. But the marriage of many wives is inside him. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. Is he inside a dead body? But poverty can't support such a lifestyle. It is when money arrives that he now realizes that his wife is getting old. He needs to change his, his wife like he changes his car. <laughs> Am I communicating? That is, that, that is where you know people is frequenting church because there is no money. Let money arrive. That is where you will know his real church attendance. That is why you need to have plenty money so you can know your true character. I will say another thing very soon. That humble man, gentle man, becomes proud, becomes arrogant, becomes very rude, can talk to anybody anyhow because he has some money. There is nothing that unravels character like money. I have made up my mind that no amount of position, no amount of money, no amount of resources will alter my character. I have made up my mind. That kind of money may it never near my hand. That kind of position, that kind of influence may it never near my hand. Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? The Bible says, the poor uses entreaties. He will just say, please, now, please, can we do it like this? He said, but the rich, they speak roughly. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 23. The rich, well, they speak very, very roughly. The poor use that entreaties, but the rich answer it roughly. I have money so I can talk to anybody anyhow. That character was in him when he was in poverty, but he didn't come out. You know, when you put sponge inside water and you press the sponge, what will come out? When you put sponge inside oil and you press that sponge, what will come out? The question is, is it the pressure that put the oil inside? Is it the pressure that put the water inside? The pressure only came to reveal what was already inside. <laughs> Somebody drank one day and he began to insult the hell out of his father in law. All the insults you can never think of, he insulted the hell out of his father in law. When he returned back to his senses, they said, What happened? He said, It's alcohol. <laughs> Insult was inside. He was planning how to insult his father. <laughs> alcohol helped him to bring it out. 
the things he has not been able to, to tell his father-in-law, he was able to tell him by the power of it and all. Am I communicating that? Is it possible now? How many languages do you speak? Which and which? Good. Have you spoken Portuguese before? Is there anything under heaven, no matter what you did, that can make Portuguese come out under any form of provocation? Somebody insulted you until you started speaking Portuguese. Somebody say it loud, amen. I, I am praying for somebody here today. That is why God has not been able to bless many people. He knows their tendencies. He knows they will begin to walk on their head. That's why God has limited the breakthrough of many. He knows what they, they will kill person and kill themselves. I pray today that Jehovah God will cause each one of us to know our possibilities and potentials so that we can ask for his help to take us to our destiny. Somebody say a loud amen. amen. Number four, money confirms our true object of worship. What a person really worships is confirmed by the presence of money. It confirms our true object of worship. The Bible said in Matthew chapter 6 verse 24, it said, no man can serve two masters. For either he will be he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. The presence of money confirms our true object of worship. I want you to know that money is the other thing that struggles to be worshipped apart from God. That he wants to be worshipped like God. What do we mean by object of worship that is money commands their devotion money commands their dedication commands their submission they will do for money what they won't do for god they will do for the sake of money what they will never do for god money if the agenda of the kingdom clashes with the agenda of their business the agenda of the kingdom can go to hell they sacrifice kingdom agenda in the favor of their business and earthly agenda. That is when money becomes the object of worship. Money confirms our true object. It confirms whether we are worshiping God in truth or not. Also Luke chapter 16 verse 13. Money confirms our true object of worship. Number three, or number five now, Money affects the extent of our impact in the kingdom. The extent of our impact. What you can do for God. What you can do for the kingdom. What you can do for, the, for humanity. Is either limited or limitless on the basis of money. Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17 said. Cry yet saying, thus saith the Lord of hosts. My city's true prosperity shall yet be spread abroad. My city's true prosperity shall yet be spread abroad. There are many people who wish they could do more for the kingdom. More for the less privileged. But they feel limited by scarcity. They feel restrained by shortage. The outcome of it is frustration. That is the power of money. The founder of Temple University, Conwell Russell, said you can do more good with money, especially if you're a good man than without it. That's why I say the money is neutral. If you're a good person, intending to do good, with more money you can do more than without it. That is number five. Number six, money affects our choices in life. It affects choices. Money, money consideration affects choices. Choices that we make most times if there are money considerations. They affect our choices. And some of the choices 
made on the basis of money can be regrettable choices. And I'll give you an example. Somebody got a job that pays him one million a month and got another job that pays him 250,000 a month. The job that pays him one million a month clashes with Sunday service. The job that pays him one million a month makes him to tell lies on behalf of his boss. Is the man around? No, he's not around. Like one child said some time ago, is your father around? No, he said I should tell you he's not around. <laughs> All right. Now, now that, that kind of thing. But he chose the job of one million because it carries more money. 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 Young lady, there are two men. One, two. This one is average. Doesn't have so much yet. Even though he has vision. And he has so many things inside him, but not so much yet. This one, already made. He has duplex in Asokoro. Another one in Maitama. He has one in Lagos. In Lekki. But I call GRA. Has house in Paris. He's 35, going to almost 40 now, but he's not yet married. Out of these two, which one will you marry? Uh, which one should I marry? <laughs> which one? I mean, what kind of question are you asking me? The, the one I am to marry is very clear. This man that will fly me abroad everywhere. Who want to suffer with suffer ahead? Money consideration. He married the man. And the only thing the man has not yet done to her is to sacrifice her. One rich man told his wife, likely in the occult, he said, please, can you agree to die? Anything you want, I will give you. So the woman said, if I die, the things you will give me, who will use it? Lord have mercy. I'm not talking about what I heard. I'm talking of, of something I commun direct communication. Am I? Many people, that is, that is why you must have money of your own. That young lady already has her house, already has her car, already has her life in dignity. So when any joker comes along the line, you say, no, I am not looking for your money. I know you have many cars. You have a car, I have a car too. You have a house, I have a house too. I'm, I'm okay, I'm settled. I am looking for character. Do you have character? Do you have spirituality? Do you have integrity? Do you know God? Do you respect your mother? Do you respect your father? Do you respect people? To hell with your money. I am not marrying money. I already have some money. It may not be up to your own, but I have what has made me comfortable. Scarcity can sponsor wrong choices. Poverty can facilitate wrong decisions. Somebody was telling me the other day, somebody is a rich person, highly positioned, is looking for a wife. And some people have mentioned me to him for marriage. That's right. But some people are, are trying to spoil it. Can we pray so that? I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Somebody, I don't even know the person. I don't know his character, but he's looking for wife. But provided he is rich, I am ready. My only problem now is that people are trying to spoil it. We have not met each other yet. Referrer. That will never be your portion. May money never suffer you to the point of making the wrong decision in your life. Young lady, may you never marry anybody no matter how rich until you can confirm their spirituality and confirm their character and confirm their integrity and confirm their sense of responsibility.
There are some young men. It's the opposite. They want to marry already made girls. Total gigolo. Looking for whose house to eat spaghetti. Whose car to drive. I saw some, a clip. You know some of these kind of clips that fly on uh, TikTok and all of these things. One, one clip the other day. A young man was driving a car and an old woman was struggling to cross the road. He honed for the old woman. Hon, hon, hon. In fact, almost pushed the old woman down. Why are you wretched woman crossing the road like this? And Can't you see car coming? He drove the car to where he was going. The house of the girl he wants to marry. This old woman was going to that house. This old woman is the mother of that girl. The car he was driving is the car of the girl. When they arrived, they re the mother said, what is this man doing here? Another young man escorted the girl, they escorted the mother when he saw her in distress on the road. Escorted her, 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 the mother, to the daughter's house. What is this man doing here? The man that almost pushed me down on the road just now. The girl said, what am I hearing? Do you know this is my mother? The gigolotic man. Went on his knees. I'm sorry, I didn't know it's your mother. What? So even if it's not my mother, do you do that to anybody's mother? Bring me my khaki. Bring me my khaki. Move out of my house. There are men like that. There are those who are, who are vowing to marry into a rich man's family. So that I can be made. What a yeshious man. Be the rich man yourself. Trust God to have resources yourself. So you can make the right decision. And marry the right person. May you, may money never be the consideration. When you take the major decisions of your life. Because most decisions you take on the, on the ground of money. Are decisions that, will, that are regrettable. I ask you another question. And we talk this without prejudice. Many people are running out of a country. When was the last time you heard a billionaire say, I'm, leave, I'm, I'm going to another country? Multi-millionaire. He has businesses everywhere. Apart from the insecurity of the land, of course, that everybody is praying and trusting God that God will end soon. When was the last time somebody has a hundred thousand, a million dollars in his account? Or something solid and say, oh, I'm tired, I want to go to Canada. Which Canada? He will fly to Canada, buy businesses there. And come back to Nigeria and be monitoring his investments there. He has it all over the world. If you have what you need, anywhere is good enough to stay. Choices, choices that people are making on the grounds of money, scarcity, shortage. Something is happening to somebody here. If you are that one, say loud, amen. amen. Lift your right hand, say in the name of Jesus. Say, Father, I receive the grace to make the right choices with my life. I receive that grace now. That is number six. Money affects our choices. Number seven, money comes with answers. The Bible said, Ecclesiastes 10, 19, money answereth all things. Money comes. A feast is made for laughter and wine maketh merry, but money answereth all things. Life can be full of questions, but money can have a lot of answers. Somebody say amen. Young man has found a good one. You just heard this testimony. If not for the wisdom the young man applied in, in, in sowing his seed. Young man has found a very good wife to marry. But no house yet. 
no source of income as such. He's not a bad person. It's just that the things are not as good as they should be for him yet. He cannot go to his father-in-law's house. And they say, where is the diary? And they give him a list and they can give people lists in Africa. Plenty list. They gave him a very long list. And he said, father-in-law and mother-in-law, listen to this. Lekosto barakada gazidish. Lekita farata o kazagada galefrito sikashta. Leko berote fekido marata zagadishta. Jaro shako paparas. Do you know the meaning of that? It has monetary value. Interpret. And value. And then they say, oh, you are welcome, son-in-law. That what you just spoke now is worth almost five million. It's more than the price or it's more than the dowry. Take wife. Is that what they will do? Two things may happen. Number one, police. <laughs> Number two, psychiatrist. <laughs> they might find him police and find him psychiatrist to assess him. So it looks like there's a Chris man here who says he wants to marry a person daughter. Somebody say a loud amen. Money is so important that it affects our choices and is so important and powerful that it answers. Somebody is in the hospital. God has not yet intervened for them. They needed kidney transplant or something. It's costing millions. And how many people know the number of people that have died? Because they couldn't afford money for medical intervention. Intervention surgery. Money. Answers. And finally number eight. Money. Affects our eternal destiny. It affects our eternal destiny. First Timothy chapter 6 verse 10 to verse 12. First Timothy 6 10 to 12. He said for the love of money is the root of all evil while which which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows they coveted after they pierced themselves through Luke 16 19 to 27 I may not be able to read all of it and the story of the rich man and Lazarus the rich man found himself in hell not because he was rich. Lazarus found himself in heaven. Not because he was poor. Because he went to a, rich, a very rich man's bosom in heaven. Called Abraham. So it wasn't poverty that had made him to go to, to heaven. And it wasn't rich wealth that made the man to go to hell. It was the character of the man. In front of the man's house. Dogs. Licked the saw of a poor man to death. In the midst of plenty this man somebody died of hunger in front of the man's gate our behavior around money and our treatment of others with money can determine our eternal destiny behavior around money treatment of others many people are in hell today because of money issues either they got plenty of money and the money took them to hell or they didn't have money and so they began to kill to get money, steal to get money, destroy people to get money. And that will never be your portion. Having said all of this, the pros and the cons, how necessary it is to have money and the kind of terrible things money can do to somebody if they are not careful, what should be our relationship with money? What should be the place of money in our lives? What should be our relationship with money? Number one, control money. But don't let money control you. Master money. Don't let money master you. Control money. Don't let money 
control you. Master money. Don't let money master you. Use money. Don't let money use you. Send money. Don't let money send you. Again, control money. Don't let money control you. Master money. Don't let money master you. Send money. Don't let money send you. Use money. Don't let money use you. The Bible said in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 23, he said that we have been bought with a price and we shall not be servants of men. If we are not to be servants of men, how much more shall we not be servants of money? Don't let money master you. Number two, what is our relationship with money? Worship God with money. Worship God with your money. But don't worship God and money. Because you can't worship God and worship money at the same time. You worship God with money. But don't worship God and money. You can worship God with your money. But you are not, you are not, you are not encouraged to worship God and money. What is the meaning of that? Money must never become your object of, okay. Now, let me explain all of that, what I mean by worship God with, your, with money, but don't worship God and money. We saw it in, in, in Matthew 6, 24, where we read already, he said, no man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mama. What does it mean to worship God and worship money? What, what is the worship of money all about? Number one, A, that is money must never become your object of worship. Second, money must never take the place of God in your life. Money must never become your object of worship. Money must never take the place of God in your life. Third, it means money must never come between you and your God. Money must never come between you and your God. Money must never come between you and your God. Fourth, you cannot give more commitment, devotion, and pursuit to money than you give to God. You cannot give more devotion, more commitment, more pursuit to money than you give to God. Do you know the meaning of that? You cannot be more committed to making money than you are committed to serving God. You cannot be more devoted to money matters than you are devoted to God. You cannot pursue God, money more than you are pursuing God. People wake up 5 a.m., 4.30 a.m. in some places to hit the road running looking for money. Question is, did they take any time to communicate with God before they hit that road looking for money? People counting money, pursuing money. I heard of a rich man who counted money and handled money until when he went to the hospital. The hospital said he was having hypoglycemia. Low sugar, blood sugar in his blood. And uh, I mean, summary is that he's hungry. He was so rich and so focused on money, he had no time to eat. The question is, when was the last time like Jesus Christ, they say, come and eat. You say, no, I must be about my, I have meat to eat that you understand not. You are so, you are pursuing the cause of the kingdom to a point where you forgot to eat. I have experienced that plenty times. My wife will ask me, have you eaten? I say, I think so. He said, you mean you haven't eaten? I said, I think I have eaten. 
then they will realize that are, the food is still there. One day he asked my, 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 my driver, uh, how about uh, 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 how is that about that? I'm sure he has eaten. He said, oh, no, I, I, he hasn't eaten. I said, I think I have eaten. The driver said, oh, no, he has not really eaten. This is the food that was taken. It's still here and the bag is here. It wasn't that I planned to fast. I just was so busy with what I was doing that I didn't remember to eat. And I, I didn't feel hungry. This man's own was in the realm of money. Do you understand what I'm saying? When what? That is, Lord, may I not pursue anything under heaven that I am pursuing more than the way I pursue you. That is why money have sent people to their premature grave and some to eternity in hellfire. That will never be your portion. That was number three. What is our relationship? Number two, rather. You can worship God with your money, but don't worship God and money. Number three, and I told you all the various situations where money Yes, that's right. Number three, making money must never be the sole aim of existence. Making money. Where somebody's whole life, his objective for life is making money. Making money must not be the sole aim of existence, but making meaning on earth and making heaven at the end. Did you hear what I just said? Making money must not be the sole aim of our existence, but making meaning on the earth and making heaven at the end. That should be the sole aim of our existence. I want to make meaning with my life on earth and I want to make heaven when, the, when, when my time on earth is over. God told Abraham, Genesis chapter 12, verse 2 and in verse 3, and I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee. And make my, thy name great. And thou shall be a blessing. Thou shall be a blessing. Listen to this. Money. Is not the end in itself. Money is the means to an end. Nobody eats money physically. You, you, you don't carry money and eat it. Money is not, is not the end. Money must not be the end in itself. Money should be the means to, to the end. Making a difference is better than just making a living. Our lives on earth should not be centered on I'm just trying to make a living. We should try to make a difference, not just making a living. And let me say this. Being blessed is for the purpose of being a blessing. Nobody says, I want to be blessed. No, no, no. He said, I will bless you and I, I will make you a blessing. Being blessed is for the purpose of being a blessing. Being blessed is for the purpose of being a blessing. Being blessed is for the purpose. So this is what happens. First of all, determine what you want to do with your life. Regarding money. Determine what you want to do for the kingdom with money. Am I communicating at all? Determine what you want to do with your life regarding money. Determine what you want to do for the kingdom with money. Determine how you want to touch human lives first. Then you can go for the money that will help you to do it. Am I communicating? This is what I want to do in the kingdom of God. This is what I want to do in the kingdom of men. You determine
examine all of that. Then you go for the money that will make you impact the kingdom. Don't say, what is your vision in life? To make money. That is a useless vision. Money is provision, not vision. And it's vision that attracts provision. So the vision should be decided first. And then the provision will come next. I prophesy to somebody here today. You are going to have plenty, plenty, plenty of money to do the right thing for the kingdom of God. If you believe that, shout the Lord say, amen. I decree that systems are put under pressure. They shall lose their sleep, lose their peace, and lose their rest until all that is yours enters your hands. Shall the Lord say amen. Number five. Number four. We saw Genesis chapter 12 verse 2. I'll bless you and make you a blessing. Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17. My seat is true. Prosperity shall yet be spread abroad. Psalm 122 verse 9. The NIV. For the sake of your house I will seek your prosperity. For the sake of your house. Money should making money should not be the sole aim of existence. Making meaning in the earth and making heaven at the end should be the aim number four what's our relationship with money refuse to allow money to alter your character refuse to allow money to alter your character refuse to get to any realm of money that will alter your spirituality and jeopardize your eternity any realm of money, any realm of resources that will alter your spirituality and jeopardize your eternity. Refuse it. You know what? Ask God ahead of time. Before you bring significant resources into my hands, deal with my character. Deal with me sufficiently. Before you bring me anything significant, have you read Proverbs chapter 30 verse 8 to 9 before? Proverbs 30, 8 to 9. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food. Don't let me be poor, extremely poor, and don't let me be rich. Feed me with food convenient. He will tell you why now. Verse 9. In case I be fool. I become abundant, I become very wealthy, and I deny you and say, who is God? It's happening in many parts of the world today. Unless I be poor and steal and take the name of my God in vain. Instead of being stupendously rich and say, who is God and go to hell, don't give me such a money. Instead of being poor, and I also steal and die and go to hell. Don't give me such a money. But the Bible gives us evidence that it is possible to be stupendously wealthy and still be in Abraham's bosom and still have a bosom in heaven called Abraham. The Bible gave us example of Job. A man who feared God, eschewed evil. He was the greatest of all the men, the richest in the east. So that possibility exists. Am I communicating? What do you do then? Lord, deal with me. Somebody say, Lord, deal with me. Say after me, say, Lord, deal with me. Any tendency, any character, any attribute in my life, any tendency, any character, any attribute in my life, any tendency, any character, any attribute in my life that will prevent me from handling what you have in mind for me. Deal with it, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Somebody say a loud amen. That was Job chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. It's possible to have it plenty and still be in your senses. It's possible. Number five, refuse every form of addiction to money. 
reject every form of addiction to money. Every form. There are people who see money and they begin to shake. There are those who can't sleep except money is around them. There, is, there are those who can't see money and not take it. Especially if, if, if nobody is watching. They must take it. You know there is a spirit behind money. It is mammon. The spirit of, of the thief. John chapter 10 verse 10. That comes to steal, to kill, to destroy. The spirit be behind kleptomaniacs. Kleptocrats. That spirit. That's what makes people kill to get money. Sell their bodies to get money. It is a spirit of mammon. I told you before, I've traveled all the way from here to South America. And there was no CC in my, in my pocket. No CC. No ego. No toro. I traveled all the way. <laughs> it was when it was time for offering, I remember that. Wow. Every attachment to money, may it die in your life. So that money can fear you. And plenty of it can come your way. Say a loud amen. amen. What are kingdom keys to making money? I'll stop here today. I will make it three of them. We have about seven or eight of them. I'll take the three of them today. And then we'll continue this whole message in the, in the Sunday service of the Blessing Sunday of next Sunday. What are kingdom keys to making money? What are our money possibilities in God? Number one, possess the God first mentality. The God first mentality. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Seek first. Second Chronicles. Chapter 26, verse 5. He said, Concerning Uzziah, he sought God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in the visions of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. Somebody say, A loud Amen. Now, this is what I want to, I want to say. How you behave today determines what you can become with God. How you behave. Our behavior affects our becoming. I want us to show God today that no amount of money will enter your hands tomorrow that will change, that will take its place in your life. You can do it now. You can begin. Let me give you three examples. When we were in the university in those days, most of our medical students, they, they go to the, another part of the campus to read in the morning and then return back in the morning. They read overnight and return back in the morning um, to prepare for classes and go. I never went to any of those re reading places once for just one reason. I sat in the comfort of my room. At the most, I would go to the cafeteria briefly, but I sat there, worship is on, Word on message on tape is on all I mean uh, Bible on cassette is on and I enjoyed myself like that three, four, five, six hours. And my, my only issue is when it is morning time, how do I organize my quiet time? I can't organize it there. I don't like book to take that place. There are some who read like that who never graduated. Yours sincerely had not one receipt. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? At that level, God knew that this man, nothing. We're in area one. Time for healing and deliverance service where one man came to me. He had said that he had a seven-bedroom duplex in a popular estate in Abuja here. And he told me, he said, I have a seven-bedroom duplex. I said, what is it for? He said, come and see it first. When you see it, I'll tell you. 
from the way he was talking, it's like, I want to sow it to you as a seed, but if you like, like it first. So he said, can we go and see it? I said, uh, right now, it's in and deliverance service. Can I go later? He said, no, uh, it's better to do it now. I then, I, I then told him, I said, please, I won't be able to go now. I have service to attend. Now, that time, we are still in a rented house in Abuja here. We have been renting out, we rented house for 13 years and three months in Abuja here. While churches were being built, God knew I didn't have a house. But I refused to leave service because I wanted to go and see a house. The man didn't return back with the house and it didn't matter. And I thank God I didn't go. Today, I cannot say that house is a testimony. What kind of house? Is it one that they built with uh, needles or what? <laughs> Am I communicating at all? No. God saw it. He saw it then. And he sees it now. Beloved, it is your behavior now that will prove to God whether you will behave correctly tomorrow. Under God, there is no amount of money under heaven that can move this person. Who has no amount. That's why we talk the way you we talk. We have rejected money many times. I've asked people, where, where, how did you make this money? And they couldn't explain. I said, go back with it. I have an offering to give. Where did you get it from? I hear what I'm saying here today. The God first mentality. Where God is absolutely first. I prophesy to somebody here. That grace to walk in the God first mentality. Is released upon you right now. If you are saying amen, say it louder, amen. If you are saying amen, say it louder, amen. There was a brother in our church. During the church construction in area one. He was doing contract here and there. And there was this big contract. They called him. They said, come and sign this contract now. He told them, he said, I'm so sorry. I am on the construction site. I am working at the church site. The overall boss of this federal government establishment said, what? Are there people in this country like this? That can say I am in church working. And I cannot come to sign for money. He ordered them to take the contract paper to him there. They brought it to the church site, met him there and signed it. People do. Uh, the reason why many of us, we have not gone as far as we are meant to go is because of what we consider our priorities. If God can see it brutally, that if I give this one 100 billion, it won't shift. His prayer life will not drop. His church attendance will not drop. Then you will be shocked what God will do with you. I announce to somebody here today. I prophesy to you today. A change of story is coming your way. A change of story is coming your way. Shout the loudest. Amen. Number two. Possess kingdom vision. Kingdom vision. We just read Psalm 122, verse 9. For the sake of your house, I will seek your prosperity. Possess kingdom vision. What is in your heart determines what God will put in your hands. What is it that is in your heart? What is it? David said, I am not going to sleep. I'm not going to sleep until I find God a house. I find God a place. Kingdom vision. And the bigger your vision, the quicker it happens. I heard the story of a man, a young man, who was going to the stream in the village and he saw some people in touch house. House that rain can beat them inside. And this little boy, I heard the story, said he cried and said, Lord, when I grow up, I want to be very rich so I can help people like this. 
God had it. And he grew up. And God made him very rich. And he's helping people like that. I heard a story of a man. When him and his wife married, they were lived, lying on the bare floor. No money to do anything. Not even a company. Lord, if you give me money to register a company, the first three jobs, I will give it to you. Do you, do you know the story? You know the story? The first three jobs, I will give it to you. The first job came. The money came to register the company. And the first job came. How much was that first job? About 180. Money given back to God. The second job came. And then the third job I think was in, I don't know how many millions or billions or whatever. The first three jobs I do, I will return all the money back to you. And that was done. Then the heaven opened. And then access into the realms of millions. Coming to the point where your product becomes the number one product in that field in the nation. I am not, I am not. And then begin to build churches in the northeastern part of the country. Why? Lord, I'm not looking for money for the same reason why others are looking. Give me, I give you. When this construction was on, one young man said, I want to be a part of this thing. I am looking for money in eight zeros. You know eight zero? That is you put one figure, you put eight zeros behind it. He said, if the money comes, I am not going to pay tight. I'm giving all of it. This guy was prayed for. The money came. And he gave all of it. Under three months. Kingdom vision. One man in Kenneth Hagin's ministry. I told the story before. He came out during a camp meeting in 1978. About 17,000 people gathered from all over the world. Pastor Adeboye was in that meeting. And the man said, all of you here, any amount of offering you want to give today, give, all, give as, you, as much as you can. Because I, at the end of the day, everything that you people give, me and my wife, we will double it. Can you imagine everybody in this church now, any offering you want to give, give. By the time the service is over, me and my wife will double it. You know what the people did? They became angry. Who do you think you are? Everybody emptied their pocket. Let us give angrily and see how this man can double it. They waited until money was counted. $3.5 million of 1978. That is like $3.5 billion today. The man came out and said, I am disappointed. All of you, is this all you can give? Well, me and my wife, we double it. He wrote the check of $7 million. Not go come on the spot. Daddy, Daddy Gio said, he followed him to find out what is his secret. How can you do a thing like this? The man said he started business only three years before that time with $500. How many years? Three years before that time with $500. And he told God, God, other people pay tight. And I think they are cheating you. You are bigger than us. Why should we give you 10 and keep 90? I will do the opposite. I will give you 90% of everything you give me and keep 10. 
And God said, do you mean business? Bam. He brought 90%, kept 10. God said, bam, bam. He brought 90. God said, bam, bam, bam. Bam, 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 bam. Hey! 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 By the time it was three years later, starting capital of $500, he could drop a check of $7 million. Even in today's money, $7 million is not beans. You can buy most things. You can buy plane. You can buy most things. Somebody say a loud amen. Beloved brothers and sisters, don't, don't, one young man in this church, a professional, master's degree in his profession, I won't mention the profession, his wife, the same profession, both of them stranded and struggling. He came to me in the office in Iran. I looked at him, I said, do you tight? I will tell you his story shortly. He said, no, sir. I said, go and start tightening. I will tell you the story shortly. Lift up your hands and say, Father, give me vision for the kingdom. Say, in the name of Jesus, put in my heart what you want me to do in the kingdom, and I will do it. Shout the Lord and say, Amen. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Possess kingdom vision. And finally, number three for today. Maintain the covenant practice. Maintain covenant practice. When we talk about covenant practice, we are talking about the covenant of giving and tithing. Maintain the covenant practice of giving and tithing. Let's qualify it. The covenant practice of giving and tithing. Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. As long as the earth remained, seed time and harvest. And cold and heat. And summer and winter. And day and night shall not cease. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 to 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 to 7. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposed in his heart. So let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loveth a cheerful giver. In Genesis chapter 14 verse 18 to 20. We saw how Abraham stepped into the realm of open heavens by the tithe. There are three things you do in the practice of the covenant. First, giving and in giving and tithing, there are three things. Number one, you are covenanting your life and your endeavors with God. You are literally entering into partnership, covenanting your life, covenanting your endeavors with God. Second, you are connecting to resources beyond the earthly. You are connecting to resources beyond the earthly. What the earth can give you is not, your life is not limited by what the earth can offer. You are connecting to resources beyond the earthly. And finally, you are opening your endeavor to superior influence Wisdom and inspiration. You are opening your in endeavor to superior influence, superior inspiration, superior wisdom. I will give you, open the windows of heaven. All of a sudden you begin to operate with a wisdom that shocks you. You begin to get ideas that shock you. You begin to get inspiration. That was the kind of thing Isaac walked in. Jacob. When he painted the wood. Inspiration was coming that be, was beyond him. Wisdom. I told you just now of the Kenneth Higgins man. Lord, 
Others give you 10%. No, I will give you 90%. And then I, tell, I, I was telling you about the man now. How can you be a professional, master's degree holder in that field? Your wife the same, and you are stranded. Do you tight? He said, no, sir. I said, all right, go and tight. This man was jobless. Wife jobless. He said he went and whatever little money came to him began to honor God. All of a sudden, he got a professional work that was paying him dollars per hour. Hello? I saw him 13 months later, a year and one month. He was struggling to pay house rent when I last saw him. No job. One year and one month later, his five or seven bedroom duplex was ready. His own. Land was bought. House was already built. He has not dropped by the covenant practice. One of the billionaires who came to instruct our kingdom financial steward some time ago, he told me, and he told the class, he said his own, he doesn't calculate which one is 10%. I used five naira, I got five naira back, and they paid me 10 naira, so let me pay five naira. He said, mm, that is not his own. His own is everything that enters is and everything. 10% of it goes to God, 10. That is not net, gross. You know what he said? He said it's better for God to cheat him than for him to cheat God. He, said he doesn't want to calculate it, so he, so he mistakenly cheats God. He mistakenly doesn't pay the correct thing. He will pay everything. Billions. He brought me a paper the other day of a contract of 126 billion. That I lay, he said, please lay hands on it. Let it succeed. That is a person who will start to work without mobilization. He has enough money to start the work. And no, no loan from any bank. He doesn't believe in loan. In billions. Has jobs in 34 out of 36 states of Nigeria. Stand up on your feet. It can only be God. Something is happening to somebody here. Something is happening to somebody here. I think you stood up too sluggishly. Sit down one minute. Now stand with a shout of victory. How many of you believe you are going places? How many of you believe you are going places? How many of you believe God is changing your life today? I am going higher. Yes, I am. After that, we'll sharply take two prayers. Two prayers, one for you and one for the nation. And then we'll release an impartation after we receive children and for dedication. Please don't move an inch until the grace is shed in a few minutes. First of all, lift your hands and thank the Lord for the word you heard. Lift your voice and appreciate God for the word you heard. Worship him, honor him, adore him. I'm going higher. Yes, I am. It's a song that we're taking. Lift your two hands and honor him. Worship him. Magnify him. Glorify him. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Elion. Thank you, Adonai. Thank you, Mekadesh. We worship you. We honor you. Thank you, Master. In the name of Jesus. Lift your hands and voice and say, Father, thank you for your word. I can never remain the same. Be glorified, Lord, in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and speak to God. Ushers, do your work. I don't want any movement right now until the service is over. Please. Open your mouth and let's thank the Lord for the word we receive. Go on and speak to God. Let's 
In Jesus precious name. In Jesus precious name. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18. I want us to read it together everybody. Want to go. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. For it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. That he may establish his covenant. Which is where unto thy fathers this day. Lift your two hands and say, Father, Father I, receive the grace I receive the grace to qualify, to qualify for, the power for the power to attract, to attract resources, resources for the kingdom, for the kingdom. Today. today. In the name of Jesus, name of Jesus. say, Father, Father I, receive I receive the grace, the grace to, qualify to qualify for the power, for the power to, attract to attract resources, resources for, the for the kingdom today. today. I, receive I receive the grace, the grace to do it right. Do it right. Oh, Lord. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and speak to God. I receive that grace. I receive the grace to qualify for the power to attract resources for the king of today. I receive the grace to do it right now. In the name of Jesus. Malachi chapter 3. In Jesus' name. Malachi chapter 3 and in verse 6. He said, Everybody read it, want to go. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob, you are not consumed. Lift your hands and your voice and say, Father, fulfill this word in, my, in our nation, in Nigeria. Fulfill this word. Father, show Nigeria that you are the unchanging God and deliver the land from being consumed by evil in the name of Jesus. Father, show our nation that you are the unchanging God and deliver the land from being consumed by evil. Oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray. Pray. Father, change social Nigeria that you are the unchanging God and deliver our land from being consumed in the name of Jesus. Let us say, Pere de Gayala, show our nation Nigeria that you are the unchanging God and deliver us from being consumed in the name of the Hosanna. In the name of Jesus. The Lord has answered us in Jesus' name. Joshua 21 and in verse 45. I want you to read it with me. Joshua 21 verse 45. Read it together. I want to go. They have failed not aught of any good thing. We the Lord has spoken unto the house of Nigeria. All came to pass. When you see Israel put Nigeria, read it again. They have failed not out of any good thing which the Lord has spoken unto the house of Nigeria. All came to pass. 
Lift your voice and say, Father, Father we, ask we ask that you bring to pass, bring to pass every, good every good thing you have spoken, you have spoken concerning our nation, concerning our nation Nigeria, Nigeria, for this season. For this season. Father, Father, we ask, we ask that you bring to pass every good thing, every good thing you, have you have spoken concerning our nation, concerning our nation Nigeria, Nigeria, in this season. In this season. Bring, them bring them to pass, oh Lord, oh Lord. in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and speak to God.